Hey everyone, John Lane here, back again with some snare drum fundamentals exercises. I've got three exercises to show you today uh, focused on the rolls. So the way I like to work rolls into my daily routine is to practice at the extreme ends. So a very soft exercise and a loud exercise, and then I also have an exercise for working those sort of medium dynamics as well and making the rolls sound smooth and clear at all dynamics. I think that's really important to your routine. These exercises work better on a drum, but they can be practiced on a pad or in the so case of the soft roll exercise, even on a tabletop uh, is probably better than a pad because you get a little bit more bounce or on the floor, another possibility. But uh, the, the pad works fine for medium and loud roll exercises, but uh, again, just to develop that sensitivity and touch in your hands, if at all possible, play these on a drum. All right, let's get started. Okay, we're going to start with the soft roll exercise. Now, I'll refer you back to my video on developing the neutral fulcrum. Uh, I won't go into all the details about the grip here, but just suffice it to say that the middle finger is actually the thing that controls the, the quality of the buzz. The index finger and the thumb support the stick this way. A couple of other setup things uh, that I do when I play this exercise. First of all, I remove any dampening that I have on the drum and I turn off the snares. This allows you to hear your strokes very clearly. All right, the next thing is um, the, I, I often open up the angle a little bit when I play soft, but, and particularly when I play uh, soft, but when I play rolls, I do the same thing. A couple of reasons for that. One, I just feel like it gives me a little bit better control with my arms, um, particularly if you're in a situation where you might have adrenaline pumping or nerves. Uh, you know, the soft, um, the, the quick twitch muscles are the first thing to, to be unreliable in that sense. So this helps you to use a little bit more arm. Opening up that angle just activates the arm muscles in a different way. And I just like the way that feels. So when I play soft, I try to open up a little bit. Uh, the other thing I play at the edge, you could try this exercise in various places, uh, but, but I like the sound of it at the edge. Um, let's see, I think that's about it. Now, the exercise itself should always be practiced at 50 beats per minute. It's not a speed exercise. It's, it's really intended to, to develop the sound of the buzzes. A uh, couple of other, one more preliminary thing. Overlapping the buzzes is really important, okay? Overlapping the buzzes and then three concepts. Texture, duration, and attack. And you want to make sure that you're consistent on those three areas. Texture, duration, and attack, and then overlapping the buzzes. So I'll walk you through. Starts with quarter note buzzes. Now the, the way that I'm getting this overlap sensation here is that I'm only lifting at the last possible second to play the stroke. Keeping my beads really close together. Okay. Notice that I'm trying to strive for consistency in the initial attack, the texture, and the duration of each buzz. I'm trying to make the buzzes as long as possible. So you can see that's how long the buzzes are for me this morning. So as you can see, like when the left stick is playing, the right one is still resting on the head. That's the concept of overlapping. One thing that's not super clear from the overhead angle is the motion of the hand and how this works. Essentially, the, the, I'm sort of letting the stick drop away from my hand, right? It's coming away from my hand and my middle finger is then controlling the pressure there that creates the buzz sound. So if I squeeze more, for instance, my buzzes are gonna be shorter. If I relax more with that middle finger, they're gonna be much more open. So controlling that and finding the texture, that's what I mean by texture. That's how you're gonna find that texture, is by adjusting the pressure there. Then, okay, once you've mastered the quarter notes, then you go to quarter note triplets. This is getting a little bit more difficult to overlap, but the concept is the same. Then eighth notes. And by the way, you just stay on each subdivision until you feel like you're really achieving that consistency that you want. You're getting the longest possible buzzes. Notice how they're overlapping. Okay, I'm gonna go to triplets. 
This is where it gets difficult to maintain the overlapping. A lot of young players, when I introduce this exercise, uh, I'll see this happen. Where they're sort of lifting the stick in between. I'm doing that real extreme. But that's, that's what we want to avoid. We want to try to overlap. Okay, so once you've got that going, then 16ths. Fives, sixes, and then I skip to eights right here. I don't do sevens. You can do sevens if you want. Now, at that point, you're basically playing the soft roll. Now, one of the things that's sort of fun to experiment with at the level of the sixth tuplet and the 32nd is you can start to now play with the texture a little bit. Now you've really gotten your attack and duration consistent. Try changing the texture up and see, experiment, see what you can do. So I'm gonna do that with the sixes here. So I'm just now, I'm activating my middle finger a little bit more. And now I'm going to relax it. You'll see how the texture changes. And back. And do the same thing on 30 seconds. So you can create different textures there. The other thing that I would show you is, um, you know, just this is a great opportunity. Once you're now at that level, at the six tuplet and 30 second level, is experiment and see how soft can you play. Right on the wood there. I'm kind of pushing the limit of what what's possible to do there. Now some people will put a little piece of mole skin right here and you can literally just push the, the beads of your stick right against the, the front head and you don't get that clicking sound on there. So that's a little uh, pro tip for you there. Okay, so that's the soft roll exercise. Okay, back for a uh, medium dynamic uh, roll exercise which is called the brick exercise and I saw um, I saw uh, my friend Phil O'Banion do this in a clinic one time and I thought it was really great. I think it maybe is an Allen Abel exercise originally. I'm not real sure where it comes from. Somebody can let me know in the comments where this exercise comes from. By the way, the previous exercise I learned from Doug Howard of the Dallas Symphony um, as one of his like daily warm-up routine uh, exercises. So this, the idea of the brick exercise, the reason it's called the brick exercise is it's like building a brick wall. So each stroke creates a perfect brick Right, and we're actually going to use uh, the same kind of idea, multiple bounces, overlapping strokes sort of idea. But in this sense, we're going to isolate each hand and uh, at the tempo of that, that medium to loud dynamic roll and see if we can't get the most silky, uh, you know, beautiful sounding buzz, a nice long buzz as possible. Uh, I do this one at like 116. Uh, you can do it a little slower, a little faster. Again, it's not about building speed, it's about building the quality of the buzz. Same concept goes here, middle fingers controlling the buzz. These two fingers are not really active on the stick. Uh, index and thumb are stabilizing and this controls the quality of the buzz. Go something like this. that I'm getting a little bit of a glancing stroke there that the bead is not coming straight up and straight down in the same spot. I'm going to talk about that in the next exercise but just maybe you'll notice that here and then when we do the loud exercise you'll see uh, how that actually uh, works. But um, the concept there here is that you're trying to isolate the sound of your right hand so that you can really hear it and make sure that all the buzzes are the same length and the same duration and that it sounds the same when you isolate it as when you put it back together. So just to make sure that that's the case, you can put your left hand on your leg and just play the exercise the same way. So I, 
I'm not tr playing too loud here, like a mm, maybe mezzo forte, maybe a forte. Not, su not super loud. And I'm just trying to get the silkiest sound as I can. And again, playing, practicing this with the snares off will really allow you to hear that. So that's the brick exercise. Okay, this last exercise is the loud roll exercise. Now, um, this one takes use, makes use of a couple of different concepts. First concept is the chicken wing, all right? And um, I saw this demonstrated by a bunch of orchestral percussionists, but the, the one that I sort of took away the most from was uh, Doug Howard's uh, demonstration of this exercise. But the idea is that you're initiating the stroke from the shoulder, so, so there's this sort of uh, somewhat of a chicken wing going on here, all right? So the idea is, what I think of it as is sort of a glancing stroke. So you're coming in, you're coming in, you're initiating the stroke more or less from the shoulder. There's not a whole lot of wrist, although you'll see when I play it that my wrist is loose for the slower uh, part of the exercise and, and then uh, firms up as the exercise goes on as your hands go faster. The reason to work on this movement is that's actually the movement that you use when you play the loud roll. If you study yourself doing that. I mean, your, your hands are not going to be doing that. You're not going to be doing that from the wrist. You're going to be doing it from the arm. So this kind of sets you up to do that. And then this sort of rotational idea creates what I call a glancing stroke, right? So the stick sort of glances about, I don't know, two or three inches, about that far. And what that allows you to do in your loud roll is bring in some of those higher overtones from the edge. It, you, you probably know from exploring the sound of your instrument that when you play in the center of the snare drum, that's the, the deadest sound possible. That's a nodal point. And then as you move away from that, you get higher and higher overtones. So this helps to pull in some of those higher overtones in there. So we combine the this sort of chicken wing stroke, which creates a glancing stroke on the head, bringing in some of the higher overtones, with a triple stroke. So instead of playing multiple bounces, now I'm only going to let the stick bounce three times. It is important to note that, once again, I'm only using my middle finger to control the buzz, to, to control the three. I'm not using all my back fingers. This isn't like a rudimental triple stroke. I'm not stroking out those, those notes. I'm literally just letting the stick fall and using a little bit of resistance in my middle finger to just keep it from turning into a buzz. So that's kind of the concept of it. Um, so I can hear, hear, so you can hear me talk, I'm going to do this, and then I'll, I'll demonstrate the full exercise for you in just a second, but I'll walk you through the basics here. So 120 on the metronome. So you'll notice that my, uh, so I'm playing quarter notes to start with. My wrists are relaxed, all right, but I'm not playing from the wrist, right, I'm not just playing from the wrist, I'm playing using my arms, I'm initiating more or less from here. It's also from the elbow, it's coming from that way. As it gets faster, it's more from the shoulder. Okay, I'm letting the stroke, I'm playing pretty firmly, playing a heavy accent, and then just letting the stick bounce two times. And from there, you go through a series of, uh, just like the table of time, a series of uh, subdivision changes. So you go to quarter note triplets, then eighth notes, triplets, sixteenth notes, all the while keeping that triple bounce. So I'll demonstrate the exercise for you now, uh, the full thing. Put a little bit of dampening back on my drum and turn on the snares. Um, I want to demonstrate for you the, the benefits of this triple stroke versus the just the straight buzz. Part of the problem with young players is that when they're asked to play loud, uh, you know, they end up just forcing multiple strokes and it sounds something like <laughs> real pressed and not, not a very beautiful sound. But one of the things, if you can develop this triple stroke, is it really opens up the drum and lets it. Uh, lets it resonate more. Um, it creates a bigger, fuller sound, that triple stroke idea there. Really helps to just get the, the drum to be a more full-throated sound rather than a straight uh, multiple bounce like that. So 
hopefully you can hear the difference here in this recording. The last thing that I'll show you, it's not really an exercise, but it's just a good way to connect all these ideas together. So the first thing to do is to play as soft as possible and then crescendo slightly up and then go back down and then crescendo a little bit more, go back down, so forth and so on. I'll demonstrate this. So I'm trying to play as soft as possible to get started and then... short as you want to get from those different dynamics. It's just a good way to feel um, the expressive possibility of rolls. So as, as my roll gets louder, normally my hands get faster. There versus here. But that roll speed is an expressive element, and this is something that you'll develop as you start to work with the texture and the sound of your roll. You might discover that if you play a soft roll, but you move very fast with your hand speed, you know, it creates a different feeling within that role. The, the last thing I'll leave you with is just this idea of stair-stepping these dynamics. So doing a loud dynamic and then jumping down low or vice versa. This happens a lot like in De La Cluz etudes. It's just a good technical kind of workout to be able to uh, try, and, try and do this. I hope everyone is staying well and safe out there and really hope that these videos are, are useful for you. Take care and keep practicing.